low in the zone. She throws a hard drop ball, a curve ball, and she also has an off speed to keep batters off balance. Starts with a strike right here. You want to stay ahead of these Texas batters. They are crafty. They've got six in the lineup batting 400 or better. That's how good this team is in Texas offensively. They have been fantastic all year long. And the 0-1 misses off the plate. County Evans at 1-1. One one. As we're just underway, Caden Henry, a freshman out of Dickinson, Texas. Crowds are different, the atmosphere is different, even a warm day in Stillwater. That's a little bit different than it's been here for the last week and a half, so everything coming together for a special Easter weekend series between two top 10 teams in the country. Kilfoyle, that one is hit squarely over to first base. Godwin gloves it, we're out number one. Good job there by Godwin to reach over there and show she's got good defense. Exactly, Lexi Kilfoyle using her off speed early um, and gets Caden Henry to, uh, you know, turn on that one and get it right towards Curly Godwin for the out. So the first out of the inning and Kilfoyle gets back to work and misses off the outer edge slightly for 1-0 count to Mia Scott, the Angleton, Texas junior. Batting 420 on the season. There's a called strike one and one. And you know, we've talked about Lexi Kilfoyle in the past, but she's just a young lady that is very business business like in the circle. Doesn't show a ton of emotion. Good, bad, she is steady from the beginning to the end of her time in the circle. Exactly, she's always so calm and composed on the mound and really kind of just brings a really good presence, I would say, to the mound for her team. And even when things kind of go wild and you know the defense maybe isn't supporting her, she just keeps attacking batters and keeps that calm presence for her team. That will carry her a long ways against this very offensive-minded Mike White Texas team. The top five teams in the country in batting average and in pitching is Texas. And Oklahoma State's in the top 25 or so in both of those categories as well as that one is hit foul. And the count will stay two and two. Mia Scott, one of three Longhorns that appeared and started in all 61 games last year for the Longhorns. Lots of experience for her with this team as the count goes full at three and two. A chance to talk to Kenny Gajewski as you did as well this week. And you know, it's interesting externally as that one misses the off speed is going to put the first base runner on for texas a walk for mia scott and that's a good ab for her for sure she worked that at bat she started off behind one and two fouled some pitches off and kind of just you know took what she could get and now she's on first base she's a good runner um, and getting her offense going oklahoma oklahoma state and texas have been the top three teams in this league for a long time so to face texas and expect to win is not a surprise in any way but kenny gajewski has made it very clear one game is worth one win or one loss how hard is it as a player to also think of it like that and not make too much of a game like this yeah it's tough with such a fun environment here and you know all of the hype around texas and oklahoma state and Woo! You know, you kind of start to think about some of that history between these two teams, but all you can do is take it one game at a time and uh, just play hard. Mia yeah, Scott on first, and she's not unfamiliar with first base, right? Yeah, it looks like she now has a 20-game on base streak going, so great job by her to continue that early on in this game. She's at first, and now a 2-1 count to Jolie Mitchell, designated player. Notre Dame transfer. And that one hit right back to Lexi Kilfoyle. Turn, tries to make two. She does, and the cowgirl. 
Charles turn a double play and get out of the top half of the first inning. Great defense by so as a freshman. When you were at Purdue, were you the leadoff hitter as a freshman? Yes, I was. I How, was. That, that's got, I mean, the mindset of that and the pressure of that, there's a lot of weight. You have to be able to handle that. And obviously, apologize, we missed uh, Tegan Kavon, who is the, the pitcher for Texas, and she is... 11 and 1 with a 1.59 ERA. So we'll get back to Rosie in a minute. But tell us about Kavon. Yeah, she's coming off a great outing against UCF last week. She was the Friday starter in that game as well. Um, she's going to work a rise ball and she can throw it on multiple different levels. She's not afraid to come in and get that ball up on the hands of these batters. And she also has a really effective off speed pitch to kind of throw off uh, this Oklahoma State offensive lineup. So Rosie Davis is going to strike out here. That's a rare strikeout. But again, the pressure of being a freshman against the uh, against the you know trying to lead a team as the leadoff hitter. That's a lot of pressure for that youngster. Of course, and uh, Rosie Davis, you know, she's kind of new into that leadoff spot, so maybe still settle, settling into that a little bit, getting used to starting off the game. Uh, but yeah, it's a lot of fun too. Yeah, well, yeah, I would imagine so. 69 strikeouts now for Kavon on the season as Talon Edwards takes the first pitch, pops it up to the shortstop uh, Martinez, and she camps out underneath it and out number two. So two gone quickly here for the Cowgirls, and Cowgirls turn to double play to get things started here to finish up the top half of the first. The Cowgirls working very quickly here in the bottom half, and. Both teams would love to have one, two, three innings and make this a very clean pitcher oriented kind of game as Charlie Godwin, the first baseman, will step in there out of Lake Wakakama, North Carolina. Wakama, Wakama, North Carolina. She's never told me I'm wrong, so I'm going <laughs> to go with that. That one misses count 2-0. Separation weekend, really, this Easter weekend with Kansas, the other top team ranked uh, tied for the top three spot with Oklahoma State at 7 and 2. Taking on Oklahoma. So this series, that series, those are huge series in the Big 12 this weekend. That one's hit sharp. Just like that, this game has a score and it belongs to Oklahoma State. Carly Godwin leaves the ballpark and Godwin just hit her eighth home run of the season. Sound the horn. Backs her way in and the Cowgirls have a 1 0 lead. Wow, what an amazing start to this series by Carly Godwin. She knows that Tegan Kavan is going to throw her rise balls, and she just keeps her hands up and drives that elevated pitch so far over the left field fence. And here comes another youngster. Boy, lots of uh, joy at home plate for the Cowgirls. More power for Oklahoma State. The Cowgirls will get a pinch runner in, but, you know, or no, not a pinch runner. Wouldn't be a pinch runner. What, what were we doing there? I have no idea what we were doing there. I know this, Caroline Wong is at the plate for the Cowgirls, another youngster with lots and lots of power. She's got 10 home runs to lead this team, although now she's got some company up there with eight. Out of Paris, Tennessee, batting 367. That one's hit sharply to first. Catch made by Stewart, and the inning is over. But And he said, you know, nobody talks about him as one of the best. Uh, but he is literally as good as anybody coaching wise in the country and his numbers suggest that. Oh, definitely. It's so impressive to me that all of his collegiate teams have made it to a super regional because that is such a challenge to get there. And um, it kind of just shows how well they prepare their team for the postseason and how well they prepare to perform in those big moments at the end of the season. Well, we talked about Reese Atwood, our feature player for Texas coming in, and the catcher will lead things off in the top half of number two. It's that one, slow roller to Edwards. Double clutches, throws, and bobbled at first, but Godwin gets the out. Wasn't exactly clean, but the Cowgirls do get the ground out of Atwood. Yeah, a huge out, I would say, for the Cowgirls defense. And Lexi Kilfoyle brings that one up on the hands, gets her to 
get a little jammed up on that one. Katie Stewart, the freshman batting 373, is in the box now for the Longhorns. First pitch to her inside. It was a slow roller to Edwards. She double clutched, and Godwin kind of bobbled it in the glove, but the umpire says she did get it down, the foot down, ball in hand, and out number one. You're right from a psychological standpoint. Big to get her out. The 1 0 misses. Count goes to 2 0. Lots of chatter out of the, the two dugouts. Lots of noise from the crowd. Terrific crowd to start this series. All the way around the outfield, the social, the outlaws, and that new addition right there, the grandstand, added 500 seats to Cowgirl Stadium, and it is mostly full on this Thursday affair. There's a strike on the 3-0. Cowgirls went with Taylor Anderson in center field today, and you see a lot of this Cowgirl team in practice, and is that still just trying to find the perfect fit in center field? I think kind of just riding, you know, who's hot right now, and Taylor Anderson got a few opportunities last weekend at BYU, and she performed, and she made the most out of those opportunities, so here she is getting another start. Well, we talked about her range. She is so quick. And she is has the ability to get to anything out there in the outfield. That is for sure. Three-two swing miss the first strikeout for Lexi Kilfoyle on the day. I love this pitch from Lexi Kilfoyle. She brings it inside, probably not even a strike there, but gets the batter Katie Stewart to uh, swing through that one. Swung through it, and that is the first strikeout for Lexi Kilfoyle on the day. Two gone, and Cowgirls playing well, pitching well so far, and a little bit of offense has given them that one nothing lead. Alyssa Washington out of Abilene, Texas, a senior for Coach White. Six home runs on the season with that 355 batting average. The 0-1 hits the outer edge, and Lexi Kilfoyle gets ahead of Washington 0-2. You know, Coach White said, I think Washington will have a good weekend. This is her kind of matchup, and he felt good. Was kind of looking at a kid, any of his kids he thought might have good weekends. This is one that he pointed out may have a breakout weekend. Yeah, for sure. And, you know, her being a senior and going against this Oklahoma State teams a few times now, she has that experience and knows what it's like to play in these big moments. So I definitely think he expects her to show up and come through for their team. One, two. One misses low and inside. Count will even at two and two. Much warmer today, but It'll cool off quickly as that sun starts to set tonight on Cowgirl Stadium. As time is called, and Caroline, something didn't like that left shin guard, wasn't tight enough, and we get back to it. A little windy, a little breezy here again today. Typical wind rolling right to left today. Really good pitch there by Lexi Kilfoyle. She had kind of been going in on a lot of these Texas batters so far and to kind of throw that one off the plate on the outer half and try to maybe get a call third strike there. Just a really good pitch. So now the money pitch, 3-2, and that one is got her, rung her up. Washington thought it was ball four. Hope played up. A great recruiter, great at developing his players and getting his teams to the World Series as we've seen the last four years. Obviously a lot of uh, great success for Texas is Claire Tim out of Buena Park, California, batting 371 will lead things off at the bottom of the second for Oklahoma State. As she hits that one, second base over in time. That is Washington flips it to Stewart for out number one. I thought it was interesting looking at uh, the history of this Texas program. 
the Texas program actually did not start until 1997. So upon the advent of the Big 12, there was not Texas softball. They had a club team in 96, but their first year of operation was in 97. And again, tons of uh, success since then. Red and Charlene McCombs Field has been a very friendly place for them over the years. As Michaela Wark, the designated player, gets her opportunity for Oklahoma State, and the count even at one and one to her. Second strike call on the outer edge right there. One, two. That one is chopped foul. It is not controlled by Scott and got underneath her glove. And Wark may be credited with a single. Let's see. That's going to be close. Nope, they are going to call it an error. Let's take a look at it. Yeah, Kavon uses her off speed here, and Michaela Wark is protecting. She has two strikes, so goes down, is able to get that ball fair. Uh, Mia Scott made a great effort for that ball, but kind of just dribbled away from her. Let's talk about what we talked about coming in, 35 errors. It's the one thing this team doesn't do is anywhere near as well as they do in batting average and ERA. They are the only team in the Big 12 in the country that rank top four in batting average and ERA is Katie Lott batting 269. We'll try to move walk around. But they have had 36 errors now in the season. They don't play great complementary defenses. That one's hit into the gap. And the Cowboys are going to have runners at first and second. Good bit of hitting there by Katie Lott. Exactly. I think um, kind of going off that defensive, you know, the miscues are what good teams are going to capitalize on. Whenever Texas is... You know, having some of those mistakes, good teams like Oklahoma State are going to be able to get some runs in those situations. And so if they could clean that up, it'd be very, very tough for them to give up runs. Megan Bloodworth will get her opportunity. And, you know, that's why you say the, the old adage is put the ball in play. Good things happen when you put the ball in play. Force that defense to make a play. And obviously the Cowgirls make them pay by not fielding that one cleanly at third. And now runners at first and second with two gone, or excuse me, with one gone. And Bloodworth, the shortstop stepping in. And already some work in the bullpen for Texas. Ludworth hits that one sharply, but it's going to be caught by Dayton in left field and almost hit right to her. So two gone. That'll bring up the bottom of the order for the Cowgirls. Getting the opportunity in center field is going be Taylor Anderson as we see a good look there at Dayton out there reading the defensive signals and a strike call to Anderson. So far, I think the Oklahoma State offense is doing a very good job of, you know, taking their hacks, being aggressive and um, putting some balls in play hard. And like we saw, you know, putting the ball in play hard and Michaela Wark ended up on first base. And, uh, you know, they're kind of just Doing a good job, I would say, so far against Kavan, who's a very good pitcher. Absolutely she is. She's a freshman, though, and this is a rough environment. And but you're right, she, as a youngster, she's pitched really, really well. And the Cowgirls are doing their, their job so far. Anderson, also a youngster, and has an opportunity. And the 0-2 misses high and away. Anderson is batting 400. She's had 10 at-bats prior to this one. Four hits, a couple of RBIs, and drawn three walks. Gets that one to first. Stewart has it. It's a race. And just in time, Stewart barely got her foot down before Anderson was able to meet her there, but no problem for Texas. Deflated our team, I think, and that was a tough time for us, but hey, we moved past it. <laughs> you did indeed. Back to the College World Series. Tulsa, Arizona, 
product Viviana Martinez batting 321 leads things off for Texas in the top of the third. The shortstop and she takes called strike. Starts even here at one and one. And that one rises up out of the zone. Talk about Lexi's primary pitch. If she has to throw, if what's her go to strikeout pitch? 100%, I would say her drop ball is her best pitch. She throws it very hard in the upper 60s, um, and she commands it very well. There's the first hit of the ball game for Texas as Martinez goes opposite way. Between third and short, out there to lot in left field, and there's the first hit given up so far by Lexi Kilfoyle. That'll bring up the right fielder Ashton Maloney out of Liberty, Missouri, batting 390 on the season. Shows bunt, corners at least from third come in. Godwin went to first. Cowgirls showing their defensive rotation on that expected bunt to the left side. Yeah, I think with, um, you know, a hitter like Ashton Maloney, who is a lefty, likes to hit balls opposite way, you really want to keep your shortstop in that 5-6 hole and not have her trying to race over to second and cover the steal. So a good idea to keep your first baseman back on a bunt and let your second baseman cover second base there. You know, she showed bunt. That time she tried to slap it, and again, very deceptive is what's coming next. Shows bunt again and misses, and it's out of the zone, so it's two and one. So quite a, a, a chess match going on right now. Am I going to slap it? Am I going to swing it? Am I going to try to lay down a bunt? Yeah, that's what makes hitters like that so difficult to defend because they can beat you in so many different ways. Lays that one down beautifully, and the throw, Edwards, does not get it there in time. Boy, I tell you what, Edwards got there quickly, made a terrific throw, but that just shows the speed of Maloney as she's still safe at first base. Exactly, and that was a great bunch. She's moving her feet there, already is getting a head start, deadens it just enough that Talon Edwards has to charge that one so much, and, the, you know, just beats it out. Great literally, runner. literally caught it and almost laid it right down in front of the catcher and made Edwards come a long way. So now runners at first and second. Nobody out for Texas. And we go to the bottom of the order with Bella Dayton out of Wiley, Texas, a senior. Batting 400 on the season. She's got 11 RBIs. Batting 368, though, with runners in scoring position, and she takes a strike. So now talk about the strategy, though, different of a bunner in this situation with a runner at second base. Yeah, so kind of the same as Ashton Maloney here. She can bunt and, you know, sacrifice herself, move those runners over, but when you have such good bunners and such good runners like Texas does, they're able to beat those bunts out and get and get hits out of them. So keeping outs off the board and giving their offense more opportunities to bring runs in. Dayton made contact with that. It was called a foul tip for strike two. So that changes somewhat of the strategy here. One, two. And that one misses off the plate. The count goes even at two and two. It's a big out right here. You don't want to turn the order over, have Runners on the bags all the way around and have go back to the top of the order to Caden Henry. Definitely. I think if they can get Bella Dayton out and kind of keep the runners where they are, they have a much better shot. There is a, a hit that will be taken by Edwards. The out at first, but it does move the runners up. So it puts Texas in a bit of an advantage, but they at least get the out at first. Yeah, you can't be mad about this at bat by Bella Dayton still gets her runners into scoring position and Talon Edwards charged that ball perfectly, threw it off one leg and got it there just in time to throw Bella Dayton out. So we do go back to the top of the order. Caden Henry takes 
Ball one. 0 for 1. Flew out her first time up. It was the number three overall prospect coming out in 2023. An applied movement science major. And she swings big at that one for the strike. Cowgirl scored a home run in the bottom of the first. That's the only runs on the board so far. Both teams with two hits to this point. And another cut, another miss for strike two. And another big opportunity right here. Exactly, and Lexi Kilfoyle just doing her best to get ahead of these batters, and she's doing a really good job hitting that outside corner on these lefty hitters. That is such a tough pitch to take with two strikes because you never want to leave it in the umpire's hands, but you also don't want to get yourself out swinging at pitches out of the zone. So really good job by her kind of working that outer half of the plate on the lefties. So 2-2 two, two here, and the battle continues. And there it is, another swing, and... Coming up 50 that time. Another strike out here for Lexi Kilfoyle. Yeah, she just as I said, kind of just pounding that outside corner, and she knew that she was going to get Caden Henry on that eventually. So really good strikeout and a big out for the defense. Yeah, it takes away the tag situation to tie this thing up. You just need to keep the ball in the infield and get the out if you're Oklahoma State. For Texas, get one out of the infield, and you could take a 2-1 lead potentially. Mia Scott, the third baseman, drew the walk, batting 420 on the season. <laughs> Takes a strike there. I think if Oklahoma State can get this big out in Mia Scott and get out of this inning, you know, without them scoring any runs, especially with them having runners on first and second with no outs to start, that's just a huge momentum shift for Oklahoma State. The 1-1. One, one. That one is hit down the line foul for strike two. Mia Scott started playing this game at four years old after a brief stint in cheerleading. <laughs> wow. I That's like the total opposite sport. <laughs> <laughs> I think she made a great choice. She's probably a great cheerleader, but she's been a fantastic softball player for Texas. Exactly. Such a good athlete. She's another one of these hitters that can hit bunt, slap, and, you know, she's got a ton of speed. She's just super, such a good athlete. She's done a good job here. Drew that walk. Now the count's back even at 2-2 two -two with two on, two out. And a one-run deficit for the Longhorns. There's a changeup. Bit devastating as Scott's way out in front of it for another strikeout. That is the come out and perform so well in those key situations as pre pressure games is really impressive as just a freshman. Just a freshman and uh, getting the start on a the Thursday night, uh, which is obviously again a three game series and everything moved up to stay away from the Sunday holiday. At least in softball as Rosie Davis 0 for 1 with a strikeout batting 402 coming in. Takes the strike there, one and one. You know, looking at Rosie Davis, we talked about her again just as a fresh as a freshman handling the pressure, but talented basketball player, talented volleyball player, and, and we talk about it. Multi-sport athletes, you just it, it seems as that one is fouled off. And is that a third strike drop? I thought it was fouled off. But they're going to say no, it went off the glove of Atwood, and there's an out. Let's take another look at this one here. Yeah, it looks like she just missed that one, and it kind of goes off the glove of Reese Atwood. Uh, she immediately started sprinting to first, so that's kind of an indicator that she did really miss it. Um, but yeah, great start to the inning for Kavan to get that strikeout. It's that strikeout, and that'll bring up Talon Edwards. By the way, on the day for Kavon is her second strikeout. Now facing Edwards, who had the 
little pop out to shortstop her first time up took that first pitch and just hit it skyward and Martinez camped out underneath it for the out and the count even at 1 1 here. Here's the pitch that one is hit sharply it's hit in the gap and that's why it's called the gift shop somebody just got a souvenir sound the horn and the cowgirls have hit another home run left the yard again and the cowgirls have a two nothing lead power by Talon Edwards. Yeah, Talon Edwards, you know, she goes up and gets this pitch. She knows that Kavon is throwing a rise ball, so she elevates her hands and is able to pull that one so deep over the right field fence. A little dab on the home plate and the teammates surrounding her. The Cowgirls have doubled up their lead. It was 1-0, now it's 2-0, and that's the third hit of the ballgame for the Cowgirls. Two of the three solo home runs. The last home run prior to that one was hit by this young lady, Carly Godwin, first baseman. She got eight on the year. Talon Edwards, by the way, now with five on the season. That one misses inside, 2-0. Alan Edwards now with 26 RBI and we're going to get a visit. So with the 2-0 count to Godwin and trying to settle down his freshman pitcher misses there the count 3-0. Green light or take? What are we doing right here? Personally, if I was Carly Godwin, I would be swinging if that <laughs> ball is where I want it. <laughs> And it is a little bit of an off speed and it does connect across the plate for strike one. Still a hitter's pitch here for Godwin. Devon's got to be careful here. And that one is hit in the gap. So that's going to be a single for Godwin. She is going to start the day two for two. Yeah, I kind of thought to myself before she threw that pitch that she was going to throw the off speed again, you know, try to keep Carly Godwin off balance. And uh, she waited back just enough to hit that ball hard through the 5 6 hole. Now, Mike White, as Caroline Wong will come out, 0 for 1 with that line out, but he's going to come out, and it would appear that we're going to get a pitching change for the Longhorns. Movement coming from the bullpen onto the field. And let's see if that's in fact going to be the case. Morgan, you know, talking to Coach White, he said Morgan has learned to take the environment and kind of shut it out. And she's starting to get more and more comfortable. On the season, Morgan has pitched the second most, but only by a couple over Sit Lolly. And otherwise, Kavon had pitched by far the most. Mac Morgan slightly in second place there and comes out and starts out with giving up a hit and falls behind 2-0 to Claire Tim. Yeah, and I think she's going to be a really good compliment to Tegan Kavon because Oklahoma State looked ready to hit that rise ball. And with Mac Morgan coming in, throwing a hard drop ball, um, kind of the complete opposite from that. So it'll be interesting to see if Oklahoma State continues to barrel up a totally different look. Very aggressive swing trying to barrel it up was Claire Tim, but fouls it off off of her foot. 0 for 1 with the ground out. And walked it off walking back to the Texas dugout. Now comes back in there with a the count even at 2-2. Two -two. That one's chopped to second. And they try to turn two, they will not. So Tim will reach on a fielder's choice and Wong will be out at second. Godwin will advance to third. 
Yeah, this was a hard chopper, and uh, the second baseman, Washington, makes a good play, flips it over to the shortstop, Martinez, quickly, but Claire Tim with enough speed to beat that one out down the line. Kind of pulled her head out and stabbed at that. Is that <laughs> good technique? I Former mean, second works. baseman. <laughs> it gets the job done. <laughs> she did make a good play again, tried to pull her face out in case that took an odd hop, and was able to make a fantastic play was Washington. I'm going to bring up Michaela Wark, the designated player for the Cowgirls. Reached on an error, and she hits that one, and it's on the line. That's going to score one. Bobble in right field. That's going to score two, and that is a two RBI double for Michaela Wark. Great job, and that hits right on the line in right field, and that, and then the bobble by Maloney allowed the Cowgirls to get two across. Yeah, I think you talk about clutch hitting, and this ball just tailing towards the right field line. Michaela Wark comes up big. That ball was really low in the zone. She's able to go down and get it and punch it out to right field and bring in two runs with two outs. Godwin and Tim scored, so the Cowgirls now lead it 4-0 in the bottom of the third. Terrific pitching by Texas all year long, but the Cowgirl offense right now has been up for the task as Katie Lott, the left fielder, has a single to her credit today. And she's ahead in the count 2-0. Oh. Yeah, to me it just seems like Oklahoma State is very prepared for this pitching matchup. They knew they were seeing those rise balls. They were able to get their hands up and hit them. And now they're seeing drop balls. They're going down, taking great hacks. So being really aggressive and just having good at-bats all the way up and down the lineup. So the Cowgirls, again, still have a runner in scoring position trying to really make this a... A game that, an inning I should say, that can open this thing up and create some separation. And there's a 3-1 count now to Lott. And there's ball four. That is the second walk issued by a Try that again. That's actually the first walk issued by a Texas by a pitcher so far. You know, Coach White said this is the most complete Texas team he's had since he's been there. And you can see why. They have complete pitching. They have complete hitting. Their fielding obviously has had it's taken some headlines, right? It's not been as clean as they would want it to be. But so far, this Cowgirl team, you know, you, you were talking about a reference to the coach at UCF. Listen. Ball doesn't know who's supposed to win, right? The field, nobody knows. Cowgirls have come out here. They look like the number two team of the country to this point. Yeah, a little shout out to Coach Ball Malone. We were talking to her. A really good quote that stuck with me is the game doesn't know who's supposed to win. The numbers don't know who's supposed to win. And as we saw, you know, Texas does have the slight advantage on a lot of the statistics, but Oklahoma State just coming out, playing hard, attacking, and so far, Everything has gone their way, but we know Texas can hit too, so can never, uh, you know, be be sure that this game is is over. No, and that's why again at four zero, at four zero, runner still on. You you want to get another run or two. You've got to make the most of every opportunity you have because they are that talented offensively. And that one misses off the plate three and one. Megan Bloodworth, the shortstop, 0 for 1 with that fly out. Would like to get 17, maybe 18 RBIs if she can find a gap somewhere. That was going to be hit right to Martinez. The throw over is in time, and that'll retire the side for the Cowgirls. But not before they put three more on the board. Really, really good, and would love to go the distance here tonight. That would mean things went well for them, as there's a change up that. That is there, and it is in there for a strike. To Jolie Mitchell, the designated player, hit into a double play her first time up. Texas got a walk. And then Jolie Mitchell hit into a double play. And the count even heard one and one. Coach said she's gritty. 
She's coming on. She's more natural third baseman, but she played learning to play first and does whatever it takes to be on the field, which is so true of so many of these talented players on both sides in the Big 12. Lots of kids come in as shortstops, first, set, whatever it is, infield, outfield. You would think that that would stay true at the college level. We see kids from that that have played traditionally outfield, playing infield, and vice versa all the time. It's whatever it takes to get on the field, right? Oh, for sure. And that's what the coaches, I think, they're, makes their job so hard is they have all of these amazing athletes. You know, a lot of kids come in playing shortstop their whole life, but you know that when you have good athletes, they're going to be able to adapt and be flexible and move around on the field and just figuring out how to put all those pieces together to get your best nine hitters and your best nine defenders out there is so tough. 3-1 in there for a called strike. Well, I, I, you're right. I mean, you know, the, the margin of difference between somebody's offense versus their defense, which gives us the best chance to win and yet is the most fair. I mean, these coaching decisions are extremely difficult. That one is hit sharply and Godwin got a glove on it, but couldn't make the catch. The throw over. Great job by Davis to track it down, but the throw not in time. That was so sharply hit. That is definitely going to be a hit and a single for Julie Mitchell. Yeah. Great job there by Davis. So yeah. there. I was going to say a great piece of hitting there, I think, by Jolie Mitchell. She worked that count, got something uh, low in the zone that she could handle and hit hard. And kind of like we said, you hit balls hard and good things happen there. Uh, good effort by Carly Godwin at first base. But good start to the inning for Texas. Ball gets in play and forces good things to happen. That's what happened there is Reese Atwood. And, you know, you talked about it. They, they got her to ground out to third. And, and it's just a relief once you get a kid like this who is so hard to get out. You get them off the field and out of the batter's box. It's a big opportunity. But as you said before, she's tough. And the throw is in time. Going to be a fielder's choice. That's a win for Oklahoma State. But wouldn't be surprised if we don't get another look at this one. I mean, that is about as close as it's going to get right yeah, here. Yeah, that was a super tight play at second base, but Talon Edwards cuts that one off and is able to get, you know, the close flip there. I don't think that she had a play at, she might have had a play at one, but all of her momentum was moving towards two, so kind of smart to get the lead runner there. Great job by Talon Edwards getting the lead runner, so. Mitchell is out. Rose uh, Reese Atwood on the fielder's choice is now at first, and that brings up Katie Stewart. Well, for one with that strikeout. Another well, young lady that coach said might have a really big weekend. Talking about Stewart. And coach just said she's been playing so well as of late and had a loss in her family and trying to trying to get settled back in, and she's due. Here's the 0 2. So nice job of staying off of that. That inside pitch, to that righty has been been hard to stay off of there. She started to to load and then to bring it, but then stayed back. For ball one. Yeah, good discipline there by Katie Stewart because Lexi Kilfoyle got her on that pitch last at bat. So now to mix it up and go and get the off speed for strike three. You know. Just that that is, you know, oftentimes a great changeup is called devastating. That's a devastating oh, pitch. Oh, definitely. <laughs> I definitely. mean, and how that stuck in Wong's glove. I mean, just a beautiful pitch by Lexi Kilfoyle. And again, not pumping the fist, not getting too high, too low, just steady, even killed as Lexi Kilfoyle in the circle for Oklahoma State. Yeah, was, I just, I don't know. I love to see pitchers get hyped up and bring that energy to their team but I also think when you see a pitcher who throws with so much confidence and so much like you said calm cool and collected and they just act like they go out there and do this every day I think that's awesome as well there's a ball count will go even to Alyssa Washington the second baseman struck out her first time up but you know, that, that is the thing. There is something to be said for a fifth-year pitcher who can go out against the number two team in the country. Go, I've got this. <laughs> I'm not worried about uh, the name on the jersey, not worried about the situation. I do this all the time. 
And it's not an arrogance. I mean, she is not an arrogant young lady, but she is a competent young lady and, and should be. Were you were you arrogant? Were you confident or were you <laughs> arrogant? Um, I'd like to say confident. <laughs> <laughs> let, let, you have to let others make that call. No, I, you know, you were obviously you were. You were a very confident hitter um, up there. And I mean, that's the bigger the game, the better you you liked it as a batter. Were the yeah. nerves greater? What? How did the you approach nerves, this? The nerves are definitely higher in games like these where, you know, it's a big game and you're, you just want to do your best because you know the competition is the best that you're going to see, one of the best you're going to see, I should say. Um, so the nerves are there, but I think learning how to play through those nerves, it actually, as you go along and get more experience, it kind of elevates your game. Well, the game is getting elevated right now for Lexi Kilfoyle. Another strikeout. If the defense will come around, they are going to be a tough out for anybody. As that's a foul ball. Taylor Anderson tried to lay down the bunt, and that ball was fielded by Atwood in foul territory. So that'll be strike one to Anderson, the Freshman left fielder. Actually, she is in center field today. Tries to lay down another one, and count will go to 0 and 2. See the hitters go out, these these bunter slappers go out and draw a line from the inside of their, their batter's box straight out. See now two or three of our two or three of the cowgirl batters do that. Are they you know what that is? Is that are they creating an aiming point? Um, I think so. I think also, you know, when they start moving forward, it gives them a good idea of where their feet are because you're not gonna be looking down at your feet, you're gonna be looking out at the pitch. And uh, you know, with the slapping rules and the bunt bunting rules and you can't step out of the box, that's a huge thing now. So um, I think just helps them keep an eye on where they're headed, making sure they're going straight towards the pitcher, not veering off towards first or stepping over that batter's box line. Anderson works the count to 2-2, two, two, and that one is hit over to first, fielded by Stewart for the out. So Anderson used her speed, made Stewart clean it, it filled it cleanly, even though it was right at her and bobbled a little bit. And Anderson's going to make every play tough as Rosie Davis will try to do the same thing. Batting first, couple of strikeouts on the day, trying to get her day started here. And she takes strike one. Didn't like that call based on the posture, I would presume. Yeah, I think it's it's also really tough when you come in and you've already struck out twice and you know you all you want to do is make contact and as a hitter you really just have to be tough mentally and kind of try to do your best to forget about those previous at bats but also learn from them going into the next at bat so um, you know just have a quick failure recovery short memory and kind of just keep attacking that one is fouled off of Davis and and it's strike two, one and two. And I like that terminology, quick failure recovery time. And you do, I mean, you just have to as she tries to walk this one off. See where it hit her here. Oof. Off of the inside part of that knee. And that'll make it, that'll make it tough getting down to first. They're going to check her out, talk to her, make sure she's fine. She says she is, and she'll come back out and get another opportunity. Yeah, Mac Morgan bringing that drop ball on the inner half. That is such a tough pitch to hit. If she can locate it there, I think it's going to be very difficult for Oklahoma State to get a solid barrel on that pitch. Morgan led the Longhorns with 18 wins a year ago. And has come in in relief here with the count at 2-2. Two and two. Through 145 and two-thirds innings was all Big 12 second team a season ago. Davis stays alive there. It was a transfer, actually was a all Pac-12 conference and all freshman team selection as well. So 
Morgan's had a ton of success wherever she's been. That one is hit into the alley, and the range is there for Henry. Mike White said we have more range in the outfield than we've ever had, and you can. Talon Edwards, you know, trying to hyper team up, I think. So, Talon Edwards, one for two with that solo home run, now with five home runs on the season. The 0 1. And it misses count will go even at one and one. Young lady that should be a freshman in college. She's a sophomore because her senior season at Southmore, she forewent, came to Oklahoma State, and earned a starting job. And has been in the starting lineup all along. Here's the 2 1 from Morgan. That one is hit foul. The count will even back up at 2 and 2. Talon Edwards, a Division I softball freshman All America honoree. Nationally ranked among the best in talent in the class of 2023. is the number three overall prospect by some accounts. Her mom, Pam, played softball at Oklahoma Baptist. And her brother plays baseball at Murray State. And that's the other thing. We talk about these kids as she's trying to fight off one after the foul came off of her as well. Lots of multi-sport stars, but within the families, we see usually see that as well as we see that one come off the outside of her knee. Yeah, but just miss that uh, guard that she has on her ankle. Um, but again, Mac Morgan bringing in that drop ball in the inner half, such a tough pitch. 2-2, two, two, and that time it hit her, and you could hear her groan. You could hear her exhale, literally heard that. And she will she will work it out on her way to first. Wow, that's tough at bat for Talon Edwards. Yeah, and I think that one got her in the ribs, and that is not a fun place to get hit. Yeah. Interesting after a little bit of display on the home run to take one in the ribs. That's uh, that's interesting and just is what it is. And there's the double dab. She showed the dab on the way home on the home run and there she's going with the double dab. But kind of going back to what you were saying, like with her family, you know, all being athletes and talent, such a great athlete. Last year she played left field and then moved to third this year. So, so versatile for Oklahoma State and adaptable. You can see, again, when there's siblings involved, it just seems to be so many of them play college ball and our parents have played college ball somewhere as well. And it does seem to be a very common trait as you might anticipate. There's a strike. 0-2 oh to Carly Godwin. And the home run and the single, so Godwin is two for two. That pitch way off the plate. A little throwaway pitch for Morgan and the count one and two. Godwin majoring in business. She liked to Helper team who is in business right now. That one's hit to third. Scott makes the play, throws it low. Stewart goes down and gets it, and that'll be the third out of the inning. The Cowgirls through four still have a four. Eight. We go to the top of the fifth, and a called strike right there to Viviana Martinez, the shortstop, batting seventh. One for one with a single so far, and in the fifth, just getting her second A.B. Tells you how effective Lexi Kilfoyle has been. I think Lexi Kilfoyle also, it, it seems to me like she just keeps getting better as the game goes on. And it's not that she doesn't start great, but when she gets going, I think it's really hard for other teams to beat her. She's had a potential. The minimum number of batters faced at this point would be 13. And she's on her 16th. That's because they got just a couple of hits, three hits, in fact, for Texas. And a very efficient day so far for Lexi Kilfoyle. And a hit here in the count, one and two to Martinez. Foul back.
think Martinez is another one of those players that Coach White said was, you know, working really hard in practice and had a great season last year as a freshman and then not maybe the start to the season that she wanted, but she's been working super hard in practice, making adjustments, started heating up last weekend against Central Florida. So another one that I think he's expecting to see really start to go off. Only three hits for Texas, and Martinez and Maloney out of the bottom of the order have two of those three. For seven and eight hole hitters. So the bottom of the lineup has done some stuff. There's good fielding by Lexi Turns, gets her feet turned, squared away, makes the throw for a first out. A very great luxury to have a terrific fielding pitcher as well. Oh, for sure. Lexi Kilfoyle takes so much pride in her defense, and it makes sense because she uses her drop ball, gets a ton of ground balls right back at her. So the more that she's able to go and get those outs, the better she is. So great job by her. Absolutely, as Maloney slaps that one foul for strike one. Asked Coach Mike White, Actually, Kevin Brown of ESPN, who will have the call along with Amanda Scarborough on Friday night. Asked Coach, when you think of Oklahoma State, what do you think? And he said, scrappy. Lots of fight, solid pitching, solid defense. Going to pull some stuff. But they're going to attack you in several ways. And obviously, he's seen that tonight from this Oklahoma State team. One and one misses, you know, two and one. Again, corners, everybody moving versus the slapper here in Maloney. We saw the speed that she had to get on in the third. And team moving, defense moving in unison right now. That one's fouled back. And the count even at two and two. You guys had this atmosphere a couple of times last year. You guys had certainly in the regionals and super regionals. What's it mean to play in front of a crowd like this? It means so much. You know, our fans are the best in the nation. Obviously, I'm going to say that uh, OSU alum, but <laughs> um, <laughs> just such a good environment. Great environment. They're not going to be happy with that as Maloney runs out another one. Terrific play. But she gets to first, first, according to the umpire. Yeah, she chops that ball, I think, high enough, just enough for her to be able to beat that one out. It's very close over there, but Talon Edwards doing the right thing, going and getting that, getting it on the short hop, throwing it off one leg, trying to get it over there as quick as she can, but speed kills, and Ash Maloney shows that right there. So let's see what they're going to do right there. And they will have a pinch runner, it would appear. Or excuse me, a pinch hitter, rather. Bella Dayton was the left fielder. She grounded out to third her first time up. So instead, they will go with young lady Katie Simmons. Katie Simmons is. Been around, you know, it's interesting the depth on this team, all Americans on the bench. And you know, Katie's been a big part of this program the last couple of years. So this is, uh, again, this is the luxury that Mike White has to have some depth to go to that bench and make these kinds of changes. Young lady out of Humble, Texas, a junior. And she'll get her opportunity here. Hit to first, Godwin will get the tag, runner will move to second, the two gone here in the top of the fifth. Coach White did talk a lot about the depth on this team and the versatility, you know, how many good athletes he has. And when some people are struggling a little bit and other people are, you know, going strong, it's always good to have options on your bench that you can plug in and maybe they'll get hot and they'll, you know, keep it going for them. So just to have that flexibility and use the bench is so important. <laughs> he said, 
The bench just he, he said he took it from John Wooden who is one of his favorite coaches of course the great UCLA men's basketball coach. The bench is a great motivator and he's got the depth to be able to do that make substitutions and we talked to him about the fact that depth is a luxury in today's portal world. We talked about trying to keep that culture going for Texas softball. That one is going to be hit by Edwards. Gloves it, throws it. What a play! Edwards makes the throw across the diamond in time, and the Cowgirls at three four team lineup in the Big 12. Really good teams playing right now. As that one is Wong, it is going to ground out to the shortstop for a quick out here in the bottom of the fifth. I like how Viviana Martinez on that play, you know, she knew she had time to get Caroline Wong out at first, so she feels that ground ball and takes a couple of shuffles in between and just kind of, you know, makes a great throw over to first, but good job by her to take her time and know the speed of the runner. Claire Tim, right fielder. Steps in 0 for 2 with the ground out and the fielder's choice. She will hit that sharply to Stewart, the first baseman. She'll step on the back and two gone very quickly for Oklahoma State here in the home half of the fifth. Interesting, you talk about the speed of the batter. Again, it's second. There's still going to be times when that play is going to have to be very quickly. How 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 alert were you every single time a new batter stepped in there? Really, what you were dealing with speed-wise? Very alert, especially on against teams like Texas who have so many slappers, so many small ball specialists. I would say, you know, even at second base, you need to be in because if they hit it at you, you don't charge it. Michaela Wark has just left the yard. Kayla Wark, the third home run of the day for the Cowgirls. Sound the horn, the Cowgirls. Now lead at 5-0, her last home run, her dad caught it. Dad couldn't catch this one. This was over the outlaw section, and the Cowgirls have a 5-0 lead. Yeah, what a great swing by Michaela Ward. This off-speed pitch, just a little too elevated. She waits back on it perfectly and drives it over the fence. Really nice night for her, a double and a home run now. Uh, I think that's three RBIs for her, so great swing by Michaela Ward. Great job there to give the Cowgirls insurance runs. Again, we've talked about how strong this Texas team is offensively. So for Oklahoma State, they want to continue to add security along the way and the left fielder Katie Lott will get another opportunity for the Cowgirls one for one today with the with a walk now it's hitting the gap got another single to her credit so she's two for two with a walk today so the Cowgirls were able to hit the Cowgirls have, as you said, have been very, very prepared as Bloodworth will avoid hitting into a double play. Well, it doesn't matter, does it? That was what we'll do in the outfield. They used to just bring back in pickups and just line the backfield, and then everybody would stand and look over that wall. The, the outfield atmosphere here has become very organic and pretty amazing as Mia Scott will try to get Texas turned around here and do something about this 5 nothing deficit. But what a moment for Michaela and her dad. Oh, definitely, and it's kind of funny because a few, a couple weeks ago, uh, we were talking about Michaela Wark not had, not having the best start to her season, and how one swing of the bat can kind of just turn that around, and that literally the next pitch she hits a home run, and it seems like since then she's kind of just been on a tear and just seeing the ball so well, and just making solid contact. Great stuff so far as Scott takes ball one. By the way, just to finish that story is. Sydney Pennington Sid uh, was here for five years, was mostly at third base for the Cowgirls. In fact, was it short for a while? And then Kylie Naomi, who is also in attendance in tonight's ball game, roaming around somewhere, former legendary uh, shortstop for the Cowgirls, moved Sydney over to third. But she autographed the ball, signed the ball, and gave it to her dad for Father's Day. Wow. Now, how cool is that? <laughs> Yeah, it's a great, great idea. It is a great, great idea. For Michaela, gift, Michaela. Michaela you, you've already got Father's Day taken care of right there. 2-2. Two, two. 
And this is count goes full. Scott trying to get going here and you don't see a team that looks as loose in Texas right now. Cowgirls look very loose. Texas looks very determined, but maybe pressing a bit as that 3 2 is going to be hit to Godwin. Gloves it, steps in the back for out one. You know, when things aren't going your way, obviously you do have a tendency to press. You just want to go harder. But sometimes trying to go harder is Jolie Mitchell. One for two tonight. Steps in for Texas. That's not uh, that's not the easiest way, right? Changing your mindset in the box can sometimes just make it more difficult. Yeah, I think when you're down and a pitcher is kind of just dominating you, like Lexi Kilfoyle is doing right now, you really just want people to go up there and do something different. You know, maybe not hit a ground ball to the defense because we've seen a ton of those tonight. Um, not swing at balls out of the zone um, and just have good at bats quality at bats and try to get something going get a few base runners out there and the next thing you know you have some momentum and uh, you can start scoring from there and things kind of loosen up I think a little bit Mitchell hit into a double play in the first had the single in the fourth they had trying to get some base runners and get some things going for Texas Cowgirls have just kind of slowly methodically leaked away from them as that's in there for a called strike to the knees. Cowgirls scored one in the first, three in the third, one in the fifth, and they've just not let Texas get going offensively. Kilfoyle has been phenomenal. Six strikeouts, only one walk issue tonight. And that one barely misses as the count goes even at two and two. Yeah, Lexi Kilfoyle has really just used her changeup well tonight, but also her drop ball, she has kept it low right at the knees all night long, moved it back and forth, in and out, um, and kind of just left these Texas hitters guessing. I think that's why she's been so successful tonight. And there's misfortune for M uh, Mitchell. The ball hits her outside of the box. It just spun back into her, and that's going to be an out, and Coach... So it is to, and then that is the call. She was still in the box when she made contact with it. So the count will go 2 2, one out, and Jolie Mitchell will go back. So that is the ruling, and that's what I was saying. I don't think she quite made contact. Mm -hmm. She hadn't quite gotten out of the box when that bat accidentally hit the ball. So. Count goes 3 2, and that's that's one to, to put an asterisk by if Texas is able to do anything here because that's new life for them and a new opportunity for Jolie Mitchell. Now, what is hit, and the review works out for Texas, and it leads to a base hit for the Longhorns. That's her second. She's Got a couple of singles on the night and the fifth hit for the Longhorns. Yeah, I think that just shows why she is one of the best hitters in this lineup. You know, a tough at bat, had that long break in the middle of it. She comes right back and is able to, I think that was an off speed pitch, way back on it, punch it out to left field and get this going for them. And, and there it is. So one hit leads to another. Runners at first and second. So instead of two outs, the review puts Jolie Mitchell back in the box. She gets a hit, followed by another hit. So instead of two outs, nobody on. There's two on and only one out for the Longhorns. Yeah, a completely different situation that when you're playing a team like Texas, whose offense has been so good this whole year, and I'm sure they've put up five runs in an in, inning no problem before. So you just, you can never back down. Lexi Kilfoyle goes right at Stewart right there. She swings over the top of it for the first called strike. That one is fouled in the dirt. So ahead quickly here. Just a freshman out of Frankfurt, Illinois. Having a good freshman campaign. 
And in a big situation right here. But let's go back to the the temperament in the circle for Oklahoma State. When it was going well, she wasn't jumping around. And now that it's a little bit tighter, it's not doing anything here either. There's a tag on third. They get the lead runner. And that'll be a fielder's choice for Stewart. Continuing to be very calm and collected in the, court, in the circle is Lexi Kilfoyle. Yeah, that's exactly what Lexi Kilfoyle does. She does not get phased when runners come on base. And she just keeps throwing her pitches, hitting her spots like she just did there. Another inside drop ball for Katie Stewart. She's been getting her on that pitch all night. Gets her to ground out to third and get the lead runner. So just awesome job by Lexi Kilfoyle. Great night by Talon Edwards, too. She's had she made some terrific plays. A couple times her throw was not in time, but she's been there making a lot of terrific plays as Alyssa Washington will get a chance to try to get Texas on the board. There's it first and second, but two out. That was hit into center field. Anderson will come in, makes the catch, and the Cowgirls get themselves out of trouble in the top of the six. Need them. Bottom of the sixth. Anderson will lead things off for Oklahoma State. You know what's interesting, too, about that? We called the Cowgirl Missouri State game, and I called it a clunky game. It was a 9 3 victory, but it never felt like the Cowgirls were playing cleanly. In this, and they gave up three runs. In this game, again, it probably gave up near four or five hits in that ball game. Here, the Cowgirls have given up six hits, but they, it feels much cleaner in every facet of the ball game. The focus level seems much different for Oklahoma State. I agree, and the defense really, I think, showed up for Oklahoma State as well. Lexi Kilville just keeps rolling them ground balls. Talent Edwards has made some really nice plays, and. Just, you know, I think that game really helped them build momentum coming into this series. Cowgirls. Taylor Anderson 0 for 2. One home run of the season. There's a called strike to Anderson, 2 and 2. out and that is the first strikeout of the ball game for Morgan yeah this is a great pitch by Mac Morgan um, she's using her drop ball as well and that one you know it starts at the knees and then kind of just falls off the table and as a batter that looks so good looks like something you can drive you know at the knees and then all of a sudden it's just almost in the dirt because she has so much movement on that pitch Brings up Rosie Davis, who must fall behind early 0-1 in the count. Davis had a couple of strikeouts to start the ball game. The first and the third flew out in the fourth. Their fourth A.B. is going to end in a ground out to the second baseman, Washington, for out number two. Well played ball game for these two teams, and the Cowgirls have had that, that you called it clutch hitting earlier. Some timely hitting, if you will, and that one hits right off the glove of Morgan, and it's going to carry him right into right field. That's a that's about a 45 degree angle, straight at her, and then straight into right field. Yeah, Talon Edwards taking the first pitch she sees. She this pitch is on the lower outside half, and she's able to get her bat out and around that, hit it up the middle, um, and unfortunately kind of just bounced past Alyssa Washington over at second base. Those plays are always the worst because, you know, the pitcher almost had it, and then the infielder starts moving the other way, and then they almost have it but don't, and single every time. But <laughs> I feel like I've seen that so much this year where it just knocks off the pitcher's glove. But, yeah. Carly Godwin will try to get a Carroll Moore, a clean hit, two for three with that home run as well. 
By the way, Talon Edwards having a night. She popped out her first time, but she's had a home run hit by pitch and a single. Carly Godwin has the home run, a single, grounded out her last time up. She's two for three, and that one's going to be hit to Martinez, and the throw is in time, and that's going to retire the Cowgirls here in the 5-0 lead. And Lexi Kilfoyle has had a good night. When you look at the numbers for Kilfoyle tonight, she has come through six innings, 107 pitches, and it's a really good strikeout to ball ratio. Yeah, she's definitely been, I think, one of the like the, the main story of the night for sure. Just another great start for her. And, um, you know, we were talking to Coach G a little bit about how important it is to win that first game of the series and just set the tone and get that first win and, you know, get ready to attack the next two. And Lexi Kilfoyle has been the game one starter in all those games and uh, gotten the, the game one win in the, in the series, all those games. So just... An awesome way for the Cowgirls to get the series going with Texas. Well, the again, you want to finish it here, but you know, to the goal is always to win the series. You'd love to get a sweep, but if you win that first one, knowing you've only got to win one of the two to get that series win, as you said, sets the tone and makes it puts a lot of importance on that Friday, in this case, Thursday night game, but. Cowgirls have done exactly what they wanted to do. They've been as clean and as sharp as maybe we've seen them almost all year long. One and one to count, and that one is hit, and just out of the reach of Godwin, although it would have been foul either way. And the count one and two. I think when you're facing a pitcher like Lexi Kilfoyle, it's so difficult because not only can she locate the ball wherever she wants her drop ball, she also has that off speed. And it's kind of like, I'm not gonna say it's easy as a hitter when a pitcher only has one main speed because you know what you're gonna get timing wise and timing obviously one of the biggest factors in hitting. Uh, but when she mixes up the timing, locates the ball in and out, and has so much movement on that drop ball, it's just really tough to hit. It's been tough on the hitters all night long. Here's the one, two. That one up and away, two and two. By the way, the crowd tonight, 1,089. That would be good for the 14th largest crowd ever to witness a home game for the Cowgirls. And Friday and Saturday, I have a feeling that number is going to get broken both days by large numbers. Good job here by Maloney to work the count full. You're the visiting team, you lose game one. What's it look like going back to the hotel and what's the conversations typically? I think all you can do is reflect on learning moments from that game, realize where you got beat, what you need to do better, and uh, just move on from there and focus on the next game because you can't go back, you can't change what has happened, but you can learn from where you, you know, were falling short in that first game and learn how to adjust and attack the next couple of days. 3-2 fouled off. So when you lose game one, now typically, again, it's a Friday night game. You're going to play Saturday, probably earlier afternoon, and then Sunday, certainly afternoon. Did you as a player mind not playing again for 24 hours? It was. It's not until 7 o'clock tomorrow night. So you got to sit around that hotel room a long time and think about that next outing. Oh, for sure. And I think that might be an unpopular opinion. Playing late at night was not my favorite because I just wanted to get started with the game. Um, but I know a lot of girls do like the night games as well. So I think that, just a personal preference. It does create some, uh, obviously, some uh, drama and the crowds. And it, that that's kind of enjoy that. But I could see sitting around all day waiting to play would be tough as the, the single is... Uh, but uh, excuse me, it was, it was Martinez rather that was able to get that uh, single. And she has got a couple of singles on the night. So giving Texas some hope here in the top of the seventh. Maloney sh shows butt and pulls back in. It is a ball. 
Yeah, Texas is definitely not out of this ball game yet. If they can get, you know, the bottom few hitters in the order on base and bring up the top, it's going to be a sticky situation for the Cowgirls defense. Still nobody in the circle or in the bullpen. And that is as much as anything showing confidence in who they've got in that circle. Definitely. Don't need anybody up yet. Again, I said yet, they may as Maloney hits that one back. And again, I guarantee you, if you talk to Kenny Gajewski right now, he's going to tell you this game is not over. And he's not thinking about series wins. He's thinking about game one win and finishing the deal here. And if you're Mike White over there standing close to Kenny at third, thinking this isn't over either, we're still thinking about winning game one. She missed on that one, and Max, you may have got a part of it for a foul, and count two and two. I would be very surprised if they did bring someone in for Lexi Kilfoyle at this point right now, just because I think this is her game to go out and win. She's done so well all night and only needs three more outs to finish it. And that one is hit to the shortstop. Bloodworth makes the throw to first, but getting back is Martinez. And that'll keep it to a single out to the first out, not doubled her up. Great play there. Yeah, great play by Megan Bloodworth. She's a little shallow there on the slapper and uh, kind of a floaty line drive. But, you know, she's got really good hops, so able to go up and get that one, make a very athletic play. We don't talk about hops and ups a lot in softball, but that is, uh, that's exactly what that was. Got the glove up, able to corral it, and made a terrific throw to first to make it close over there for Martinez. He was back in time. And so one gone, five nothing to Katie Simmons, who Simmons, who is again came in for Dayton and hit back in the fifth, grounded out to first in that first A B for her. And take strike two there. 0 oh and two. Lexi Kilfoyle's ERA is down to .88. Pitched 150 or 117, 118 coming up here. That one in the dirt, and that's a ball, one and two. Yeah, that is a really nice scoop there by Caroline Wong. I feel like I haven't given her enough credit tonight. You know, Lexi Kilfoyle pitching a great game, but Caroline Wong also helping her pitcher out, framing pitches for her all night, and um, doing a great job back there. Here's the one, two. Swing and a miss, and another strikeout for Lexi Kilfoyle. On the night, that's the seventh Texas batter that has struck out at the hands of Lexi Kilfoyle. Yep, just continuing to use that drop ball, putting it low in the zone, and uh, getting the strikeout. So the Longhorns, one final at-bat opportunity here, minus a hit by Caden Henry. They actually will pinch it, and they will bring in Good, a sophomore out of San Antonio, Texas. Gets it back to Lexi. Lexi, the throw in time, and the Cowgirls have got it done. Pitched very well. Terrific on the offensive side with nine hits, and the team that has the best offensive pitching coming into this game is not the team that just won.
once was right My heart's better lost in the shadows of doubt I'll find it again, I'll scream and shout Through the trials and tears, I'll never stop Till my heart is found and the pain drops In the silence of the night, I hear his call A distant whisper through the wall I follow the sound with hope renewed Knowing deep inside my heart's imbued With strength and courage, I'll forge ahead Darkness where my heart has fled Forgetting the depths and despair I find my light and reclaim my heart with all my hearts that are lost in the shadows of doubt I'll find it again, I'll scream and shout Through the trials and tears, I'll never stop Till my heart is found in the pain drops I draw near to the beating of my heart loud and clear For though it was lost, it's never too late To find my heart again and seal my fate In the journey of life, we may stray, but with faith